Hey everybody, it's Jimmy from the DIY and Digital, and today we're making some modifications to the block signal code we wrote for running long trains. Welcome back everybody. First of all, if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, and hit that bell icon so that you don't miss any future updates. Like for instance, this is an update on a previous video that I will link right up here as well as in the description where we're improving the code on our block signal system. So for those of you that don't know, block signals are basically the signals that tell trains whether they can go through a section of track, they need to go through slowly, or they can't go through at all. And we did a tutorial a little while ago that showed how to do that. And I discovered something after running that program for a little while, as my layout got bigger and I was able to run longer trains, that there was a slight hiccup sometimes in where it goes from yellow to green. Sometimes the sensor would catch the gap in between cars and it would go from green and immediately back to red and be missignaled. And so I worked through it a little bit and I have figured out a way to almost completely nullify that. Sometimes I think it's hooked, I think it's hiccuped once, but it's way better than it was before with long trains. And I'm talking about a 20 car train. So if you guys are implementing this on a big layout, this will help you out a lot. Um, also, it's just gonna make your block signals more accurate. So what we're doing here is we're adding a five second delay on the block clearing and the signal going to green. So right now, the yellow will literally just sit there. Let's uh, scroll down to the yellow. So here's our yellow right here. So right now, yellow will check every five seconds to see if it's green. Now, if that check happens to shoot right through a gap in the cars, then it's gonna see it as green. So we wanna change that. And we're gonna do that by adding a count that checks every second to see if it is green. And if it's still green, it's gonna add up to five. Now that probably didn't make a lot of sense, but I assure you as we go through it, it will make a lot more sense. So it's not a lot of changes to code, so don't worry. So we're gonna start up here in our declaration. So we're gonna add another integer. So I'm gonna do INT. Now for those of you that don't remember, integers are the changing numbers that we have throughout our program. So let's see here. We have INT green count. Now what we're doing is that green count is going to be a number that counts up to five. And the reason that we are doing that is we're gonna have five seconds that it counts and once it hits five, it's going to change it over to green. So that's all the modification that we need to do right there. So now we can go all the way down to yellow. So let's head down to yellow. And this is where the majority of our modifications are going to be. So the first thing we need to do is we need to change our delay from 5,000 to 1,000, which is equal to one second. So Arduino measures time in milliseconds. So 1,000 equals one second. All right, so the next thing we need to do is we need to declare what green count is. So we're gonna say green count is equal to zero because we want the count to be zero every time that the yellow, the yellow loop starts. So we're gonna say that this resets green count to zero. All right, so the next thing we need to do is we need to add in a few extra if statements. So we're gonna add to the first one here and we're going to say that if value A1 is less than 500 and value A2 is less than 500 and remember that's the double ampersand, green count is less than five. We're gonna change this right here to green count plus plus. Now, what that's going to do is it is going to add one 
every time it goes through the loop and both the sensors are clear and the green count is still less than five. So this resets every time you come into this loop. So we're gonna add one, we're gonna add two, we're gonna add three, we're gonna add four, we're gonna add five, and then the signal will go as you will see. So the next thing we're gonna do is we're going to add an else if, we're gonna do double parentheses, value A1, is less than 500. Then we're gonna add an OR statement, which if you remember correctly, is the double bars, which is your forward slash key above the enter key. And then we're gonna do value A2 is less than 500. Then we're gonna do AND green count is less than five. Then we're gonna do a bracket. And then we're gonna say green count equals zero. Okay, so let me explain what we have done here so far. So what we've done is basically we've said that signal yellow is the yellow light is on right here. So we'll say yellow light on. Then we'll say delay of one second. And then we have a reset of green count. So anytime it comes into yellow, it's gonna set it to zero. So let's say the train's passing, the train's passing, the train's passing, and it clears. Both sensors should be greater than 500 as they're right here. Then it's gonna start adding one to our green count. And since it loops, every second, one is gonna represent one second. So if it's less than five, it's going to add a second to the green count, add a second to the green count, add a second to the green count. So we'll go one, two, three, four, five. But let's say that the signal did get mistripped and any of these sensors are hit and the green count is less than five, it's going to reset the green count and then it'll go back, it'll go one, two, three, accidentally tripped, zero. One, two, accidentally tripped, zero. That way, not a single car can mess up the signal system. So, okay, so we got that part. Now, how do we say that the train is completely clear and we want it to go green? So we're gonna do another else if value A1 is greater than 500 and value A2 is greater than 500 and green count is greater than four. You can say equal to five, greater than or equal to five, greater than four, it doesn't really matter. Um, this is just the way that I'm writing it. And then we're gonna put our standard signal state equals ST underscore green, which then sends it back. All right, so let's check our sketch. First, we're gonna have to save it. And there we go, guys. So we have a sketch that will allow for more bulletproof signaling and it's a lot easier for longer trains to get through the signal without mistripping it. So thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video and I hope you can apply this to your layout. If you haven't already, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and hit that bell icon so that you don't miss any updates, including ones like this, which were for a previous video. Until next time, I'm Jimmy from the DIY and Digital. Happy railroading.